Hi everyone, I'm Mayank and today I'll be talking about our work on CryptFlow, Secure TensorFlow Inference. This is joint work with Nishant Kumar, Nishant Chandran, Divya Gupta, Asim Rastogi and Rahul Sharma, all from Microsoft Research India. We focus on the problem of secure machine learning inference in this work. Consider a hospital who holds a pre-trained ML model and is willing to provide inference service to external patients as long as the ML model remains private from these patients. Now consider a patient Bob who wishes to avail this service by feeding in his medical data. But he wants to keep his sensitive medical records private from the hospital and just wants to learn if he has the disease or not. This is where cryptography comes in and provides an elegant way to keep both the parties happy. Both the parties can execute a cryptographically secure protocol between themselves such that at the end of the protocol, Bob learns the disease prediction and neither of the parties learn the other party's inputs. Secure multi-party computation, often referred to as MPC, is an interesting line of research in cryptography which focuses on constructing such protocols. I don't need to define MPC at this workshop, so I will just flash to this slide for completeness. While the theory of MPC had been developed way back in the 1980s with protocols like Yao's garbled circuits in GMW, it is only recently that these protocols have become efficient enough to be used in practice. While there have been a lot of recent works that use MPC for the purpose of secure inference, they have fallen short on three important aspects, usability, scalability, and security. Let us look at each of these aspects now. First, there is usability. MPC protocols typically work over low-level circuit representation of the desired computation. This representation is in the form of arithmetic, boolean, or a combination of these circuits, which makes it very hard to code the required functionality and debug them. Another issue is that of float to fixed conversion. ML models work over floating point numbers, while MPC protocols perform better over integer rings. This is why we need to encode floating point numbers into elements of an integer ring using finite bits of precision. This process is known as float to fixed conversion and such encoded numbers are called fixed point numbers. A major shortcoming of prior works was their manual float to fixed conversion for their ML benchmarks, which becomes very difficult for large benchmarks. Coming to the second aspect that is scalability. Prior works have only evaluated simpler models over small datasets. More concretely, they have worked over datasets like MNIST and CIFAR, which have 10 to 100 classes and the network over them have less than a million parameters. To evaluate real world benchmarks, we would like to work with the ImageNet dataset, which has 1000 classes and the neural networks for it have millions of parameters. Lastly, there is a security aspect. Prior works on secure inference have mostly worked in the weaker model of semi-honest security where parties are assumed to follow the protocol specification honestly. Instead, we would like to work in the stronger model of malicious security where security holds even when the adversarial parties arbitrarily deviate from the protocol specification. While some recent works have described malicious secure protocols such as ABY3, there is no implementation of malicious secure neural network inference tasks in them. Keeping the issues with prior works in mind, we set out with the following goal. Consider a user who is interested in securely computing a function f. Ideally, she should only have to express f in its most natural representation and then push a button to get secure and efficient implementation of an MPC protocol for the same using some crypto and compiler sorcery. For the case of machine learning, one such widely used representation for expressing f is TensorFlow. Let's now look at some important properties that we would like for this compilation to have. Firstly, the compiler should be user-centric and error-proof, meaning that it should prevent the developer from making mistakes that compromise security. On top of that, it should take care of all the cryptographic details so that the developer should just write vanilla code and the compiler can take care of the rest. Finally, 
We would also like that the protocols output by our compiler have good performance and provide the flexibility of choosing between semi-honest and malicious security. This is exactly what we achieve in this work with Cryptflow, which appears at IEEE SNP 2020. Cryptflow has three components, each of which address one of the three aspects mentioned earlier. For usability, Cryptflow provides Athos, which is a compiler from TensorFlow inference code to semi on a secure MPC protocols. To allow for scalability, Cryptflow has Porthos, a three party semi on a secure MPC protocol geared towards neural network inference tasks. And for security, it has Aramis, which is a general technique to convert any semi-honest secure MPC protocol to a malicious secure protocol by placing minimal assumption of integrity on a trusted hardware. With these three components in place, we are able to achieve ImageNet scale secure neural network inference for the first time without loss in inference accuracy compared to floating point. To give you a sense of some performance numbers, here we have two neural networks that we consider for our benchmarks. ResNet 50 and DenseNet 121, both of which work over the ImageNet dataset and are widely recognized in the ML community. In the LAN setting with commodity hardware, Cryptflow can run both of these benchmarks in under 40 seconds for semi-honest and 120 seconds for malicious security. This translates to an overhead of less than 3x for malicious security over semi-honest. I'll start by first elaborating on Athos, followed by Porthos and Aramis later in the talk. Recall from earlier slides that Athos is a compiler which takes TensorFlow inference code and outputs the corresponding semi honest secure MPC protocol implementation. After the TensorFlow code is input to Athos, the first step of compilation generates metadata information which consists of two parts, TensorFlow graph and the shape information of all the tensors in the computation. This is followed by compilation of this metadata to a high-level intermediate language called HLIL. HLIL consists of a sequence of function calls and fully supports floating point tensors. Let's look at an example. Consider this piece of code written in TensorFlow for logistic regression. The metadata generated for this TensorFlow code looks like this. On the left side, you see the TensorFlow graph and on the right side, shape information of all the tensors involved in the computation. In the next step, this metadata is compiled to HLIL, shown at the bottom, which has a series of function calls over floating point tensors. The next step in the compilation is the float to fixed conversion. Recall from earlier that ML models work with floating point arithmetic and need to be converted to fixed point for efficiency reasons when run securely. Concretely, consider a real number r. Its fixed point representation would be the floor of r times 2 to the power s, where s is a parameter called the scale factor, which determines the number of bits after the decimal point retained after conversion to fixed point. Prior works in the area of secure inference have resorted to a manual process for converting the floating point ML models to fixed point whereas Athos performs this task automatically. The main challenge in doing this is to choose the right value of the scale factor S. A high value can lead to a loss of the most significant bits, while a low value means that the number of bits after the decimal point is insufficient, both leading to a drop in accuracy. Our approach to solve this is to consider S as a hyperparameter and use the validation set for tuning and finding the right value for it. After the float to fixed conversion is performed, Athos compiles the HLIL code to a low level intermediate language called LLIL, which is C-like imperative language. The logistic example from earlier would look like this in LLIL. The second line in the LLIL code here is a scale down operation, which is needed to keep the scale factor after multiplication of two fixed point values to S. LLIL has a modular design and exposes an interface for plugging in a variety of crypto backends. The observation here is that the operations in TensorFlow can be divided into two categories, 
non data manipulating operations and data manipulating ones the former includes operations which move the data around without actually changing any underlying value for example squeeze transpose concat etc whereas the latter includes operations that change the underlying value of incoming tensors for example matmul relu etc to keep the crypto backends as minimal as possible ethos provides an lli library which takes care of all the non data manipulating operations so that the crypto backends only have to implement the data manipulating operations which are much fewer in number compared to all the operations supported by tensorflow to demonstrate the modularity of lll we currently have two backends plugged into it aby which is a two party protocol by demdor et al and porthos which is our own three party protocol the final step involves compilation of lll to the crypto backend of choice having two intermediate languages hlil and lll allows us to perform various standard data flow analysis and compiler optimizations more details on this can be found in our paper next we will talk about porthos which is the three party protocol geared towards neural network inference tasks like i mentioned earlier there have been many prior works on using mpc for the purpose of secure inference this includes secure ml chameleon gazelle aby3 secure nn delphi etc these works fall in either the 2 pc or the 3 pc category where the former refers to two parties involved in the computation and similarly three parties for the latter case it is well known in the crypto community that 3 pc protocols perform better than the 2 pc ones by at least an order of magnitude and this is why we only focus on 3 pc in this work among the prior works the most relevant 3 pc protocols for us are secure nn and aby3 primarily because of their good efficiency for ml tasks here are some numbers comparing the communication required for secure nn and aby3 for two neural network benchmarks the first network is from the secure ml paper it consists of three fully connected layers while the other network is from the chameleon paper which has one convolution layer followed by two fully connected layers you can see in the table that aby3 performs better for the secure ml dnn whereas secure nn wins for the chameleon network in fact for general networks there is no clear winner between these two protocols and their relative performance is largely governed by the exact structure of the neural network of these two we chose secure nn and improve its efficiency keeping secure inference in mind this is where porthos comes in it builds over secure nn and optimizes some key aspects useful for large scale benchmarks porthos is a semi on a secure 3 pc protocol that tolerates up to one corruption along with semi on a security porthos also provides privacy against one malicious corruption This notion was introduced by Araki et al in their CCS16 paper. Consider the client server setting where clients share their data with three non-colluding servers. Then privacy against malicious corruption guarantees that a malicious server cannot learn anything about the input of the honest clients as long as the output of the computation is not revealed to this server. All our sub protocols are information theoretic and use Two out of two additive secret sharing, with the invariant that all our main protocols, which make up layers of a neural network, receive and output shares in Z to the parallel only. In the interest of time, I'll skip elaborating on the optimizations that we made to the secure NN protocols. Please refer to our paper for the same. With Porthos. we reduce the communication of both linear and nonlinear layers compared to secure nn for convolution layers we get a reduction in communication of as much as 80% for the example convolution layer from densnet 121 this layer takes as input a 230 cross 230 cross 3 image and performs convolution with a filter of 7 cross 7 with 64 output channels for nonlinear layers we observe 25% lesser communication in porthos over secure nn's protocols to see how these reductions concretely translate to for large cnns let's look at the table 
to furnish the secure NN numbers for these two DNNs along with portos, we also plugged in secure NN backend to LLI and ethos. The table clearly shows that Porthos has 20-25% lesser communication compared to secure NN for benchmarks like ResNet 50 and Densent 121. We now move to Aramis, our final component which provides a general technique to get malicious secure MPC protocols that are quite efficient in practice. Recall from earlier slides that unlike semi-honest MPC protocols, malicious secure protocols allow for arbitrary adversarial behavior. One can typically get malicious security in two ways, crypto-based and secure hardware-based approaches. Crypto-based approaches use secure cryptographic primitives to design protocols for achieving the desired level of security. In practice, for semi-honest security, they achieve reasonable performance. But for malicious security, while some techniques for specific protocols can have reasonable overhead, general techniques that work for arbitrary protocols come with a large overhead. Coming to the second approach of using secure hardware to get malicious security. Let us consider two users, Alice and Bob, who wish to compute a function f on their private inputs x and y. They can ask a third party Charlie, who has access to a secure hardware component, to help them with the computation. The secure hardware, for example Intel SGX, provides two guarantees, confidentiality and integrity. The former guarantees that all the runtime data remains secret from Charlie, while the latter ensures that Charlie cannot alter the code or its associated data while the computation is being performed inside the secure hardware. With these guarantees in place, Alice and Bob can comfortably send their inputs encrypted under the secure hardware's key to Charlie during runtime and get f of xy back from him. While such hardware-based approaches are faster than the crypto ones, they suffer from side channel attacks like foreshadow, meltdown, plunderbolt, etc., which can often compromise their guarantees. This is exactly where Aramis comes in and combines the two approaches. Like we just saw, crypto-based approaches have reasonable performance for semi-honest secure protocols, but not for malicious security. And hardware-based approaches are generally faster, but suffer from side channel attacks. To get the best of both worlds, we assume a minimally secure hardware that only provides integrity guarantees and combine this with the semi-honest secure protocols from crypto-based approaches to get Aramis. Let's look into Aramis in a little more detail. We start from a semi-honest secure MPC protocol with the goal to get an MPC protocol that is malicious secure. If there were a mechanism using which the parties could prove to each other that they cannot deviate from the protocol specification, then we can get malicious security just like we wanted. For this purpose, we use secure hardware which provides integrity guarantees that the participants cannot deviate from what's specified by the protocol code once the execution has started. For our prototype implementation, we use Intel SGX as the secure hardware of choice, but our techniques are compatible with all secure hardware which guarantee integrity and are in no way tied to SGX. Let's look at how we use SGX along with a semi-honest protocol denoted as PI to get malicious security. We start by considering two parties, Alice and Bob, who want to perform some computation on their private inputs by engaging in an interactive protocol. We assume that they have the code for PI and access to SGX beforehand. Parties begin by proving to each other that they are running the correct unaltered code for PI and that this code is loaded into SGX. For this, Alice first sends a message to Bob attesting to her honesty. Bob verifies this message and then does the same to prove his innocence. Once this is done, trust is established between the two parties. After this, the protocol execution can start and the parties will send signed messages back and forth which will be verified to have originated from the secure environment by the other party before it accepts them. 
Here SGX provides the guarantee of correct execution and PI that is the semi on a secure protocol guarantees security. There are several challenges that we faced while using SGX to run our benchmarks. Due to time constraints, I will only be able to talk about one major challenge that comes because of the stringent memory constraints in SGX. Please refer to our paper for the rest. The memory that is specifically dedicated to SGX is encrypted and very limited. We know that CNNs like ResNet50 consume a lot of memory when run securely. All the paging is available as an option. It is super slow because of the extra encryption and integrity checks that are performed every time this happens. In fact, randomly accessing memory in SGX can be up to 350 times slower than doing it outside SGX. To solve this problem, we split large CNN layers into smaller chunks such that the working set never needs paging to accommodate its contents. To determine the optimal chunk size, we use the layer's public parameters like its size, etc. to determine what chunk will work best for this layer. After overcoming these challenges, we were able to scale Aramis to networks as large as ResNet 200 while maintaining an overhead of less than 3x over semi-honest. In this talk, I presented our work on Cryptflow, an end-to-end -end solution for secure machine learning inference. Our paper and source code are both available online. Please check them out for more details. All this is good, but you might have two burning questions. What about 2PC and what about bitwise equivalence to ML code as MPC protocols for machine learning typically perform truncations that are erroneous in the lower bits? You need not worry. We have a new system called Pi which addresses both of these concerns. The paper and source code for Pi will be released shortly. Thank you.